Contrary to popular belief, Tesla's wireless system was not through the air. He tried this approach but found it unfeasible due to dispersion issues. Instead, he focused on the ground beneath us, seeing the Earth as an immense reservoir capable of becoming a conductor for electrical transmission. This concept, which is the cornerstone of Swear, was seen as revolutionary at the time and continues to influence electrical distribution systems today. Understanding Tesla's vision requires us to delve deeper into the realm of high voltage electricity. Remember when we talked about power loss and voltage drop? Well, these are current dependent, with power loss being calculated as P loss equals R times current squared. Tesla's approach was to significantly increase the voltage, thus reducing the current, which would in turn eliminate the touch voltage issues. This is because the voltage drop across any distance across the earth ultimately goes to zero. This principle takes into account the increased resistance of the soil. So if we step up the voltage by three orders of magnitude from the typical 100,000 volts of transmission lines to the 50 to 100 million volts Tesla suggested with his magnifying transmitter, the current would scale down by a factor of one one thousandth. And here's the magic, because power loss is proportional to the square of the current. When the current drops by one one thousandth, the power loss drops by a staggering one one millionth of what it would be through copper lines. Even if the earth wire being used was just the diameter of the copper wire, the soil could have a resistance million times that of copper, and it would still have the same power loss over the same distance. And there's more. The earth won't have inductive and capacitive impedance losses, unlike suspended transmission wires. Moreover, the resistance is inversely proportional to the conductive area. So when using the entire area of the Earth to conduct electricity, the resistance plummets and the power loss scales proportionally, with this reduced resistance due to increased conductive area. So in essence, Tesla's high voltage approach could potentially solve many of the power loss issues we face with today's electrical distribution systems. It's a radical idea, but one that could revolutionize the way we transmit power, making it more efficient and sustainable. Tesla's most radical vision was to conceptualize the Earth itself as the single wire for the simultaneous transmission of power and information. The Earth is filled with conductive materials like water and various minerals that facilitate the flow of electrical currents. By utilizing the Earth itself, the entire planet will become an interconnected energy and information network without the limitations posed by traditional infrastructure. Although Tesla's invention of single wire transmission did not achieve immediate widespread implementation, it was a precursor to his ultimate aim the wireless transmission of energy and information through Earth. Imagine rural areas gaining effortless access to power, or the possibility of transmitting vast amounts of data without the need for extensive and costly infrastructure. Nikola Tesla's groundbreaking idea of using a single wire for power transmission is a revolutionary concept that turns traditional electrical transmission on its head. To truly appreciate its genius, we must understand the science behind it. Though to be clear up front, this cutting-edge technology is not without its challenges. Challenges like finding the best locations on the globe for the practical application of using the ground as a conductor are still subjects of intense research, yet the potential benefits of Tesla's single wire system are too significant to disregard. Let's dive into a simple yet powerful physics analogy to further grasp this concept. Imagine two balloons filled with air connected by a hose. Each balloon represents a reservoir of electrical charge, and the hose represents the single wire in Tesla's system. When we squeeze one balloon, the air flows through the hose and inflates the other balloon, similar to how electrical charges are conducted from a higher potential to a lower potential. When the squeeze balloon is released, the other balloon starts to discharge the air back through the hose. This back and forth movement of air is akin to the alternating current flow of charges in Tesla's single wire system. This alternating oscillation continues until all energy is dissipated due to factors like the ohmic energy loss in an electrical circuit due to resistance and impedances. But how does this oscillation actually perform work in a practical setting? The oscillation is in essence a cyclic movement of potential energy to and from a mechanical system creating a repetitive action that can be harnessed for the efficient transmission of significant power to perform real actionable work. The upper terminal of Tesla's magnifying transmitter, often seen as a mysterious component, actually plays a significant role in the system's efficiency. Think of it as a large capacitor or a reservoir for electrical charges to be stored into. When the system is activated, charges surge upwards into this terminal, similar to how air fills up a balloon in our previous analogy. Instead of letting these charges dissipate into the atmosphere through arcing or other wasteful processes, 
surfaces, the upper terminal conserves them, allowing them to bounce back towards the ground. It's akin to the return discharging of air in our balloon analogy. After the enlarged second balloon releases its air back through the hose after the squeezed balloon is released, the charges reverse their course and flow back the way they came, oscillating one completing cycle. This is how the upper terminal acts like a spring in its function as a giant capacitor and charge reservoir. It conserves and recycles the system's potential energy rather than losing it. By eliminating arcing from the upper terminal and reducing electromagnetic radiation, Tesla made a significant leap in the transmitter's efficiency and capability of converting the input energy into electrical energy conducted into the ground. In other words, having an upper terminal that's arcing off into the air would be analogous to the balloons having holes in them, losing potential energy as the air rushes out each time the balloons fill up. This dampens the power signal bounced back into the ground. In a similar vein, when the frequency of squeezing the balloons increases, there are eventual losses from the rapid back and forth movement of air surrounding the balloons. The acoustic waves produced by the balloon's surface can be likened to a damping of the power signal. Applying this to Tesla's magnifying transmitter, as the frequency escalates, more oscillating electromagnetic EM energy dissipates into the air from the upper terminal. This results in analogous damping of the input power signal intended for conduction into the ground. Tesla himself even stated that the magnifying transmitter, if so desired, could be designed to emit 95% of the input energy from the upper terminal as EM radiation and direct only 5% as currents into the ground. Though he explicitly claimed this to be the naive struggles of the radio men. You can't pack sufficient energy in your radio wave to do anything we need to do mechanically. Conversely, Tesla explained that his more favorable approach was to design it to emit only 5% of the input as EM radiation and therefore channel the remaining 95% of the input into UHVAC straight into the ground. Serendipitously, this demonstrates the transmitter's dual capability, wireless radio wave communication through the air in addition to non-interference mechanisms for the in-ground power signal transmission and transmitting information frequency bandwidths. This also clears a common misconception that the return for the circuit is through the air. The function of the upper terminal in conserving and discharging the charges back into the ground effectively dispels this notion. This action can be seen as being analogous to an oscillating mass on a spring, but for the electrical charges. The concept of the upper terminal in Tesla's wireless power transmission system can be analogized with the operation of a Helmholtz resonator in acoustics. Just as a Helmholtz resonator, commonly found in automobile muffler systems, interacts with acoustic waves by damping out specific frequencies while allowing others to pass through, Tesla's upper terminal does something analogous. It acts as a reservoir resonator for electrical charges, carefully tuned to respond to certain frequencies. The tuning of Tesla's wireless receiver, specifically the capacitance of the upper terminal and the inductance of the secondary coil is crucial for its proper functioning. These components create a resonant circuit that determines which power signal frequencies will be allowed through and which will be filtered out. Just as in an acoustic system, where the resonator permits only a specific frequency to resonate, in Tesla's design only the electrical frequencies that match the resonant frequency of the receiver's circuit will be allowed to pass through the secondary coil, causing a movement of charges oscillating within the circuit. All other frequencies will be filtered out, effectively preventing them from inducing a current in the secondary coil. The upper terminal and secondary coil's CL resonant circuit must be tuned appropriately to absorb the back and forth movement of the charges at the transmitted frequency so that it minimizes any damping of the wave and hence conserving energy. This conservation is crucial as any deviation from the tuned frequency would result in energy losses. The core of this idea is that unless the receiver is tuned precisely to the transmitting frequency, it won't receive power efficiently. Inspired by Tesla's calculated genius, Tyson's relentless curiosity, and Rogan's raw tenacity, you belong here with us thinkers who never rest. Together, let's find the clues to those profound insights and thrilling eureka moments that I know you've been searching for. Are you really still not subscribed? In Tesla's wireless transmission system, the driving input electrical currents would come directly from a specifically designed isochronous undamped high voltage AC alternator. These HVAC currents are then fed into the primary of the transmitter coil. This coil gets magnetically coupled with the secondary coil, which induces a current in the secondary coil. This current is stepped up to an ultra high voltage alternating current, or UHVAC, allowing the upper terminal to charge up to this ultra high voltage. Upon the recoil of the upper terminal, 
that further pushes the charge down into the ground in phase with the second half of the wave oscillation as the charges are injected into the ground for their transmission across long distances without the use of wires. Now let's turn our attention to the receiving end. Here the primary coil serves the reverse function as the transmitter. Once the ultra high voltage charges begin to oscillate between transmitter and receiver, the currents in the receiver secondary coil induce step down currents in the primary at the desired voltage level for practical use at the receiving end, thus completing the cycle and making the energy ready for practical applications. To summarize, the primary coils in both the transmitter and receiver respectively act as the power input and takeoff for transmitting electrical energy long distances through the ground without wires, aka wirelessly. They function in tandem with their secondary coils to either step up or step down. The energy for transmission for practical use. Drawing on the insights of titans like Nikola Tesla and Neil deGrasse Tyson, my goal is to share these eureka moments with you. Just how many of these light bulb moments have you already missed out on not being a subscriber? Hold on to your seats, folks. We're diving into the mind of a genius. Ever heard of Benjamin Franklin's little lightning rod from the 18th century? A groundbreaking idea for its time, right? But enter Tesla with his lightning protector patent and boom. The games changed. While many were content with age-old solutions, Tesla was about to reinvent the wheel. And not just for safety, but for jaw-dropping efficiency. Conventional pointed lightning rods, a symbol of protection or a lightning magnet. Tesla challenged the status quo, shedding light on their sneaky flaw. While they're allegedly designed to leak electrical charges into the air, Remember, the principle of electrical density increasing as surface curvature decreases. Tesla thought, why invite trouble? He believed they weren't the protective heroes we made them out to be. Here comes Tesla's masterstroke. Ditching the conventional, he envisioned a protector that's both innovative and downright smart. Imagine an elevated terminal with outer conductors, embracing surfaces that boasted large curves. What's the trick? Keeping electrical density so low that the surrounding air says, not today, lightning. Think of it as a fortress that doesn't just defend against lightning, but practically tells it to keep off its lawn. Now let's get geeky. Tesla's magic lies in manipulating electron surface density with ingenuity. As you scale up that surface curvature, the electrical density drops. And this drop, it's like a force field. Large radius curved surfaces are less keen to release those pesky electrical charges. The result? Air stays insulated, arcs are kept at bay, and your equipment says, thanks Tesla. Think you've decoded the enigma that is Tesla? Buckle up, because with every unraveling layer, there's another deeper layer of sheer brilliance waiting. As we chase the white rabbit down to Tesla's pièce de résistance, the cornerstone of the non-dispersive concentrated energy projector, Tesla's lightning protector patent on steroids, yes, the one and only true death ray. This isn't just another safety and defense weapon we're talking about here. First, erase all preconceived notions of US government Star Wars programs with lasers, dinosaurs, and whatever this really awesome dubstep poster is radiating. Let's take a pit stop at the half-sphere marvels crowning the magnifying transmitter's upper terminal. Not mere eye candy, folks. These are the unsung heroes, reigning in the electron surface charge density, holding back the torrent of electric arcs. If you've been paying attention, which I bet you have, arcs are the judases of Tesla's electrical world. With their treachery, every undulation of the charge, every waveform peak, bleeds precious energy and dampens power. But Tesla? He was 10 steps ahead. He stitched real-world physics with unparalleled mastery in the architecture of his magnifying transmitter. Those curvatures, minimizing electron density, aren't just for the Instagram shots. They're the quiet titans, jacking up the terminal's prowess. They don't just allow a colossal charge quantity to build up, they push boundaries, boosting the upper voltage limit. And why's that a big deal? Lower current, which translates to, bingo, fewer emissions for the same power-packed punch. So what's the real game changer here? Well, it's not all about Carol and her safety goggles, that's for sure. It's about stepping up the voltages by not merely just 2x to 3x, but by two to three orders of magnitude, more than even most modern high voltage transmission lines. That's in the range of 100x to 1000x. We're talking 100 million volts, claimed by Tesla. While traditional systems are gasping for breath, Tesla's simplicity is already at the finish line. Those seemingly innocuous half-spheres? They were the bedrock, the cornerstone that birthed the legend of the lightning protector. An emblem of how Tesla's brain ticked, always connecting, always innovating, always laying the groundwork for tomorrow's lesson. To sum it up, with the lightning protector, Tesla wasn't playing checkers. He was playing M80s in the porcelain toilet. Each invention a stick of dynamite within a greater bundle, each strategy another charge set.